Hey there, friends. Welcome to your Saturday edition of Hot News, where we go over this late, latest top stories in the segment I like to call Twin or This Week in News. <laughs> So I'm gonna highlight the top articles and stories from this past week that we covered in hot news. Anything that did come out on Friday, like the judgment against Apple versus Epic that I didn't cover in hot news, isn't really gonna be followed up on here. I'm gonna wait till Monday to do a deeper dive on that. This is just meant to be a cursory overview of what we got for the week. You guys had great reception to the last two weeks that we did it, so here we go, continuing that onward. So let's talk about Intel and how it looks like they might be directly competing with the RTX 3070 and RX 67. 700 XT as according to the latest rumors and benchmarks that are popping up with these GPUs. They actually look to be remarkably competitive and at decent power efficiencies of 175 to 225 watts. So Nvidia and AMD might want to watch out because Intel is coming for them and Intel CEO is coming for AMD's CPU saying that they're likely to have three major AMD Zen-like moments in the near future with their heterogeneous architectures, their GPU architecture, as well as everything else that they're working on with their IPUs. So they're going to have major zen-like moments as well as something that's a pretty dramatic step forward and well beyond anything that was talked about yet a lot of hype from intel from the new ceo saying that hey we are gonna be back in business baby you better bet on us and a lot of people bet on the initial reports that the new ps5 which has a smaller cooler to the tune of roughly two-thirds of a pound lighter was actually worse based on some initial testing of just measuring exhaust temperatures however what i mentioned we should wait out for and has actually happened is somebody measured the SOC temperatures directly where the brand new PlayStation actually runs 10 degrees cooler on the SOC. It runs hotter on the VRAM and the VRM, which could potentially lead to the hotter exhaust temperatures, but the actual CPU and GPU running cooler on these new setups. So that's a reversal from a story that we talked about last week and another reversal from a story we talked about last week. It was reported that Horizon Forbidden West was going to be either $20 or $70 more expensive to get on PS5 if you want the PS4 version. Well, Sony backtracked on that, said it's now going to be free, but however, for any future PlayStation first party games going forward, it's gonna be an extra $10 in order to get that cross-generational compatibility, which makes it worse than Xbox. That's just, it's stupid. You don't have to charge us 10 bucks, Sony, you just want to. And they're gonna get a lot of people's 10 bucks because they had their PlayStation showcase showing off all of the latest titles that they have coming out, either for just the PS5 or the PS4 and PS5. For Spoken, getting a really good trailer, it's gonna come out to PS5 and PC in spring of next year. Gran Turismo 7 is coming to both PlayStation consoles on March 4th, 2022. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is getting a remake for the PS5. We're getting another Marvel Spider-Man game from Insomniac Games launching in 2023, as well as a Marvel Wolverine game, which I'm actually pretty excited for. And then on top of that, God of War Ragnarok got a title as well as a trailer, which actually makes it look like it should be ready to launch, hopefully next year, which is what they initially said. And hopefully next year we'll get APUs that are actually RDNA 2 powered. AMD's Red Brand APUs are allegedly amongst mass production right now and they'll have RDNA 2 cores which means that they'll be based on the same architecture that's currently in the Xbox and the PlayStation 5. But now we have to say goodbye to old architecture from Nvidia because Kepler support is dropping with the latest drivers that's coming out over on Linux. It's finally gone. Say goodbye to the vast majority of the GTX 700 series. They will no longer be supported from October onward officially from Nvidia. But while you say goodbye to the GTX 700 series, say hello to the RTX 30 Super Series and RTX 40 Series with major leakers indicating that the 30 Super Series should come out in January. The 40 Series will come out in October and we might get two GPU launches next year, which is just gonna be great with all of the stock issues that about. If you launch more cards that nobody can buy, then people diversify their interests. So technically there are more cards available because people are spreading their eyeballs between more GPUs and they're not trying to pick up as many of one GPU. It's a genius marketing move by Nvidia. But a card that you actually really can't get your hands on is the RTX 3080 Ti. 20 gigabyte edition, but a Russian YouTuber was able to pick this up over from a retailer and benchmark it, showing that it has tremendous Ethereum performance because it doesn't have the LH Arma that NVIDIA has been putting on all of their new cards. And it actually doesn't officially exist according to drivers. So it performs well in like mining scenarios, but not in gaming scenarios. And it's a card that NVIDIA never actually meant to come out. And NVIDIA probably doesn't want this to come out. There's an open source project to get RISC-V GPUs to be able to support the CUDA library, which would make it so that you don't 
have to stick to Nvidia's monopoly on their GPUs in order to use their software stuff. Being done by researchers at the Georgia Institute of Technology and the Seoul National University, it could potentially open up a whole range of app support moving forward in the future. And Apple might be looking into Risk V support with them posting a job listing hiring a Risk V engineer. As they're very much Risk in remastering Alan Wake, it doesn't seem to be. It's coming out October 5th on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Got officially confirmed. Also, Matrix Resurrections getting an official trailer, which got me at least intrigued enough to want to watch the film. Not necessarily excited that's going to be a good movie, but Matrix Resurrections trailer out there in the open. But you know what's better than rebooting old movies? Rebooting old telescopes. The James Webb Space Telescope's getting a launch date of December 18th. Hopefully, it launches before the end of the year and replaces the 30 plus year old Hubble telescope that's floating up there in space. And it looks like TikTok's going to replace YouTube with it now being reported on Android. People watch TikTok for more hours than YouTube now, which means now that the short form video has surpassed YouTube. This is just, however, on Android devices since iOS does not report these metrics. On average, TikTok users watch about 24 hours of content per month, whereas on YouTube, it's 22 hours and 40 minutes. Let me know, do you prefer short form or long form content? Or or do you like both equally as long as they're catered to the proper format? I want to hear from you down below in the comments. And is Tesla's full self-driving catered to the proper format of city streets? Well, a lot of people would say no. A lot of people would say, hey, it's going to be ready eventually. Well, now some of the software has been leaked out into the wild with people being able to root their Tesla Model 3s and then be able to implement full self-driving betas on them that they shouldn't actually have access to, like in Ukraine, where this YouTuber is actually able to get it on there. And Tesla probably didn't use full self-driving to set to Nierberg Ring, I'm saying that in inappropriately, electric vehicle record with them coming in with the Model S Plaid stock setting it, beating the Porsche Taycan by about 12 seconds. While the Model S Plaid is super fast, so are AMD CPUs. However, it appears that they may be coming up to a CPU core count limit because of the way that they have their cores laid out in their architecture report coming out from a non-tech and from AMD's reports on hot chips that they use a bi-directional ring bus, which probably limits the amount of cores that they can have on the chiplets to eight, which means that they can't get past that for upcoming generations unless they change the topology of the course first. A little intriguing deep dive if you want to see that. What's also intriguing is some researchers are implementing anti-ransomware technology into your SSDs before you even have to install any sort of anti-ransomware protection. The firmware called SSD Insider++ Plus Plus actually is remarkably effective against certain ransomware attacks. However, it does come at a speed penalty of 17% increased latency, 8% lower throughput, but could potentially be worth it to make sure that you don't have to pay a half a Bitcoin to whatever ransom hacker has hacked your PC, made it so that your grandma can't see pictures of Jimmy anymore. And you can't see me anymore because that's the end of this recap of this week in news. Why don't you go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News in case you want a deep dive on everything that's going on with the RTX 30 Super and 40 series launch. We talk about it there and I'll see you tomorrow for the special Sunday edition of Hot News. Cheerios.